phenol toluene route. We're going to start with two reactions. First one is oxidation to benzoic acid. So toluene in contact with oxygen with the cobalt naphthenate catalyst at 150 Celsius in three atmospheres. We're going to produce benzoic acid and water, <clears throat> of which we're going to separate them for further treatment. So benzoic acid then is going to be converted to phenol via oxygenation. Once again, oxidation of the benzoic acid further to phenol and CO2. This is done via cupric benzoate catalyst at very high temperatures, moderate pressures. Okay, first things first, we're going to have a fresh feed of air, which is technically speaking nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Our catalyst is stated here, cobalt and naphthenate and our fresh feed of toluene. Then we're going to have this recycling from this tower of toluene. So this is our treated toluene plus our fresh feed toluene. Now please note that this is liquid gas reaction. So the liquid is toluene and the gas is air. Technically speaking, the oxygen. They are sparged in this vessel. So there are plenty of bubbles. Toluene is going to be in the minimum uh, limiting reactant as possible in order to avoid side reactions, especially reduction reactions and formation of other oxidant material. Once we have the reactions, as stated before, we want to avoid benzaldehyde production, benzyl alcohol, benzyl benzoate, and so on. We want to maximize phenol. Now, in order to avoid separating or avoid mixing, we are going to send all the material to this vent with help of water as well. So many impurities are going to be going through this part right here, as well as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. All the leftovers are going to be recycled. Now the reactor organic phase is going to be sent to this fractionation column in which we're going to separate most of the toluene and the leftover of the organic material, for instance, benzaldehyde, the phenol, benzoic acid, and so on. Now, we're going to send all the material to this part right here. We want to increase the temperature of this water, and the water is going to extract benzoic acid. Actually, it's going to be dissolving water, uh, sorry, will be dissolving benzoic acid. Please note that all the other impurities will not crystallize or dissolve, so they are sent directly here, and then we're going to crystallize our benzoic acid. Once we have solid benzoic acid, we're going to recover that to this water wash, we're going to clean them, and then send them to the melter. We want to come here and repeat the purification process. In this specific case, we're going to add further catalyst for the second reaction. We want to ensure that phenol is produced. We're going to add further oxidation material from air and we will add steam. Once again, this is a liquid gas reaction. So the benzoic acid is going to be in liquid phase and air and steam are going to be in vapor phase. We're going to obtain two products, liquid and gas right here. Actually, both contain phenol. So it's kind of tricky because we got to ensure that we obtain most of the phenol from this part. The vapor part is going to enter this column and the column is nothing more than a separation of all the off gases. Once again, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, oxygen leftovers, and so on. On the bottoms, we're going to be founding our benzoic acid and reactive benzoic acid and send it back here. So most of the phenol is still here and here, okay? Now in this specific case stated, we want to remove nitrogen gas, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. Aqueous water and phenol stream is going to be produced. So this is sent back here and here. And the organic crude phenol stream. So technically, sorry, this is the organic this is the aqueous water stream, so this is a stream here, and the crude phenol is this one right here. The crude phenol stream is partially sent as a reflex to the fractionators and withdrawn as products. So in this 
fractionator, we're going to have a lot of phenol plus water and phenol. We can now remove this as our final product. Please note that we cannot do this straightforward because we need a recycled stream from here, which is then formed from here, which depends on this unit and this unit. So let's check it out. The bottom product from the second oxidation reactor consists of organic compounds. So most of these compounds are rich in phenol, some leftovers of benzoic acid and so on. The best scope will be to recycle here, mix it with the other organic rich material and treat this as crude phenol. We want to ensure that crude phenol is purified as pure phenol. Heavy compounds such as star are removed, so this is important. I didn't tell you but from the reaction part, the bottoms contain a lot of impurities, mostly tar. So we send them to the scrubber, add the water, tar is removed, and now rich water phenol are now ready to be recycled. Actually we have water phenol from various streams, from the scrubber, from this vent, and if you were to analyze from this part right here, we send it here, mix it, and then forms here. Anyways, let's see how we are going to get rid of water. Crude phenol is fed to a fractionator in order to obtain purified phenol as the bottom product, I already told you that, and phenol water mix as the top product. So here we have water phenol mix. So we don't want to just deploy that as water phenol leftovers, we want to recover phenol. And actually this is a isotropic mixture, so it's, it will be kind of hard to recover it. So let's see how we do that. We're going to send it to here, and because we mix this, we're going to be able to get rid of most of the water. And now we're going to have water plus phenol which cannot be sent as final product. So remember, we're going to send this back to the recycling. So this is a huge recycle ratio in order to ensure phenol is fully purified. So it's very important to keep that in mind. We are using these three recycle streams in order to ensure some phenol purity at the end. And this is how we produce phenol via the toluene way.